Well, for those of you who might be new uh, to the New England Impact MPL, I'm Dina Gentili, and I am the Director of College Events and Programming. And what we have done over the spring season is we have uh, launched our league. We have welcomed all of our players and all of our founding clubs. We have had, I think it's been uh, close to 10 Zoom sessions over the spring season. A lot of great interactions with our guests. We had two on the field sessions. One was our uh, college impact training session, our clinic. We exposed all of our players to our college coaches to simulate what it would be like to go to a college ID day. And then we had our mixed club event at the end of May where we, um, again, simulated what it would be like to play with people you're unfamiliar with. And we actually had college coaches in attendance watching our players. Uh, so this is all special um, in terms of what we're doing. All of these programs are aimed to supplement what you're getting on the field. And we wanna provide a college pathway for you and really kind of open your eyes to different experiences. And as a reminder, our impact values, which I know our guests really will, will, will touch upon without even knowing what the core values are, um, because they're, she embodies all of this. Um, but the impact values are about pride, how we compose ourselves on and off the field, about empowerment. So not only how you empower uh, yourself, but also how you empower your teammates and creating the very best team and best team experience that you can. Um, it's about legacy building. This spring, probably one of my favorite Zooms was having players who have graduated from one of our clubs uh, or several of our clubs and they've come back as uh, first year players at the collegiate level to talk to our, to our seniors who are going off um, into their rookie year. So that was a phenomenal Zoom. And that's part of legacy building about um, who you are and what you want to share with everybody else. And we'll continue to do those sessions as well. And the last core value for us is inspirational change, which, um, as you know, our guest is Christine Lilly, and she has definitely been a change agent for our sport. Um, when I reached out to Christine, it, 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 it took like less than uh, a day. I think it was like 12 hours to get back to me to say, yes, I definitely want to be involved with everything that you're doing uh, with the impact. Um, and that speaks volumes about giving back and sharing stories. And I just want to say to you ladies, you know, to be in the presence of someone who is uh, legendary like Christine Lilly is, 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 a special, is a special relationship. And I hope you all I think she's frozen. She'll come back to us. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. I want some of that pizza, Kiki and Carolyn and Lily. <laughs> we will give Dina a chance to come back. <laughs> How are you guys doing? Good? Good. Well, why she's out. I just want to thank you guys for being flexible. I had a reschedule yesterday because my daughter's team had a game. And I wish I had good news that we won, but we lost. So, but that's, that's all right. There'll be more games to play. Um, so, oh, she's coming back. She'll just probably sign off and come back. So I'll just, uh, I'll talk a little bit why she's um, getting back on with us, but thank you guys for taking the time. I see you in different places, eating dinner in the car. So I appreciate you making time to hang out with me a bit. And I'm just learning about this impact league that you guys have. And I think it's pretty incredible. And I think you probably, I've started to realize that with all the things you're able to do and um, play and the conversations and being around other people that um, want to do the things you want to do in life with soccer and school and all that stuff. So I think it's incredible. When I was growing up, there was, wasn't this, there wasn't girls. I was playing with the boys. So my team from second to eighth grade were uh, boys. And, uh, but I loved it. I wouldn't have changed it for anything. I loved it. But the opportunities that are open for you guys and the amount of girls that are playing sports and at a competitive level is, is awesome. Uh, so I'm excited to, to be here and, and share a little bit of my story. Um, since Dean has taken a little bit longer, I'll just go a little bit of my history first, and then we'll get into, you know, talking about some other things. 
Um, so I played on the US team for 23 years. I made it when I was 16. Anybody 16, raise your hand. There's one 16. So when I was 16, I was junior in high school when I made the national team and I was petrified. Not only to step on the field, but my first trip that I went on was to China. So it was all the way around the world. And I was like, what? <laughs> I don't even think I had a passport. So there were certain things I had to get in, uh, get in, get in ready so I could go on that trip. Um, oh, Dina, you're back. Oh, yeah, I got on mute. You're muted. Okay, great. You <laughs> if you segued in, Christine, take over. I did, I did a little bit. I just started to go over my, uh, my history a little bit. So, um, so like I said, I was 16 when I made the national team in junior in high school. My world changed. And a lot of people, when I say my world changed, they think, oh my God, you're on the national team. You got to play in World Cups and Olympics and all that. And, and yes, that is so true. But what changed for me when I made the national team is I was training with people that were just like me. So I just alluded earlier that I played with the boys from second, eighth grade. So I was around boys. There was no other girls playing soccer. And I was like, gosh, I was always the oddball out, which was fine. Um, but then when I made the national team and then I was around these women that were badass, if I even can say that, um, they worked hard, they competed, they had fun, they laughed, they cried, they sweated. They wanted to rip people's heads off. They wanted to be the best. And that's why my world changed. And I was like, oh my gosh, I've been waiting for this moment to be around other people that were like me, where I didn't have to apologize for, for beating them in practice or winning a game. They, they felt the same way. So my life did change that day and it changed for the better. And to this day, I'm still good friends with a lot of these players. And we are, we're on text change from the 1999 World Cup team where we are always wish, wishing everybody a happy birthday or a new baby or something's going on in their life. Um, so it's not only about the game. And I think that's what you're learning being part of this, uh, this impact league. It's not just about the game. It's about other things. It's about the relationships. It's about the empowering that you feel your, your core values that you have are so important for you playing the game, but also, you know, after the game is over because the, um, the game eventually will be, you guys have a long way to go before you can, um, call it quits, but um, you know, I've been retired for over uh, shoot 10, 10 or 11 years now. And now my part, my living the game is coaching kids like you guys. So that's been incredible. So I was on the team for 23 years, played in five World Cups. I played in three Olympic games, won two of each. Um, I got inducted to Hall of Fame, went to the University of North Carolina, um, played four years at Carolina, won four national titles, um, got my degree in communications. Uh, who played professionally for the Boston Breakers in the first WSA league. And then we, the uh, WPS, there's so many leagues, but I was a part of the early ones. Now the NWSL is alive and kicking and doing great. And we're so uh, proud of the girls and the organization um, of that. And you guys can see the high level soccer. Um, hopefully some of you guys have them in your backyard and some can watch on TV. And then recently in the past couple of years, I wrote a book called Powerhouse, which is a book about teamwork um, and basically about the success of our U.S. national team. And I think what's really cool about the national team, we've won a lot. Um, we've won championships, but we also have always been in the top three. I think there's one event, World Cup or Olympics, that we didn't make it in the top three. And so when you look at that longevity you, you got to ask yourself, like, why is that women's national team so great? And why do they keep on winning? And my book kind of talks about that with 13 tactics, saying my number was 13, and talks about the success we had and what we did with leadership, communication, our, uh, our culture, our chemistry, you know, picking teams, um, foundation that we have, all those elements create great teams. And the book was written to share that story, but also help other organizations like businesses and um, nonprofits groups to work together to be more successful. So that's what I've been up to. And I go around speaking about that uh, while I'm coaching kids, doing camps and clinics and um, trying so hard not to step out on that field and help my teams win because it's so hard <laughs> to, to just yell at things. You get, there's so much that you can say to these kids. So you guys enjoy what you're doing in the, on the field right now. and know these coaches are doing the best to help you guys be better. So that's a little bit of the background, Dina, I'll share with them. Anything I missed that you thought um, you were going to add or anything? Well, first of all, thanks for being a great teammate tonight. And <laughs> I'm taking over when I could not. And that's just, I mean, epitomizes kind of the spirit of what we're trying to do here. 
Yeah. Um, I would just like to say, um, how many people here have watched Christine Lilly on uh, video or live or on some uh, broadcast? Okay, awesome. Oh, thanks, guys. That's great. I tried, yeah. I'm trying to convince my kids and let them know that I actually did play. So, <laughs> And I do have to say, so I was in um, 1999 sitting in front of the television watching our U.S. national team compete. Uh, for the World Cup against China. And there were a lot of different moments for that game that resonated with our media. But there was one critical moment that I don't even think we have what we have today without Christine Lilly's head um, saving uh, the, a, a shot on the goal line. It was a corner kick and coaches oh, always, always kind of wait and pray that players stay until the ball is in our possession or, you know, played uh, forward. And Christine Lilly saved, saved the day, saved the game. I think she saved the score, to be honest. I know there was an article written because I Googled it. Um, yeah. In her own words, Christine Lilly. And I think that's great because it is definitely an overlooked play. But I think those of us who were sitting in front of the television and oh, yeah. you know, soccer lifers understand the importance of that. Can you share a little bit more yeah. about uh, that yeah sure I mean I think that's um I I do like to talk about this um this header in the game and not because it was me but I think just an example of of how important your role is as as players and how important it is to do your job and I think a lot of times you know we get caught up in like oh I gotta score goals to feel like I you know I impacted my team or um you know or make that diving save as a goalkeeper to know I contributed but I think you have to you guys remember that everyone's contributing and everyone ma is making a difference for your team and if you don't do your job something like the world cup could have happened where if I wasn't staying on my post and doing my job the ball could have just went in so I think what's interesting like I told you I played for 23 years on the national team my job on corner kicks is on the post. I mean, I think I've had that position. I played in 354 games. I would say 350 of those games I was on the post. Um, I'm not, I'm five foot four. I'm not supposed to be out in the penalty box trying to win headers because that's my weakest part of my game. However, it was also the one thing I did on the goal line to save the game. Uh, so my job was to be on the post. And I think what's really interesting too, so I'm a lefty. So if you guys are looking at me, I would be on this post always, because if you think about it, my left foot would be on the inside. So if the ball comes into the net, I'm clearing it out with my left foot. So there's rhyme or reasons why your coach has you doing certain, certain things. And my left foot was stronger. So it was inside so I could clear balls. And when I, if, if this is the goal here and you're looking at me, like you guys are, the ball was being served from over here. So as it was served across the front of the goal, you know, our goalkeeper moved and then I moved a little bit because I'm creating a, making the goal smaller. Um, and as I did, that's where the header came. And I remember seeing Bry, our goalkeeper, Brian Scurry, dive. And then the next thing you know, it, I just jumping. And I, I think I have a picture of myself heading it. Um, and I think my eyes are closed because I'm like, just head it. And then when I headed it down, it landed in the six yard box. There was like three Chinese players just getting ready to just head it back in and Brandy cleared it away. Um, so it's real important to, to stick what your, your job is. And we And before games, we went over we would go over this every, every pregame. We'd stand up, stand in your positions on corner kicks, attacking and defending. And we'd stand up, pretend where the goal is and for walls. So we, oh, we knew it was like second nature. It wasn't like, oh shoot, where am I going to be? And even the players on the bench that were getting ready to go in, they even had to know more sometimes because they didn't know which position they'd be in. So your roles, your coaches, you're giving, you're giving you certain roles and you got to embrace them. You may not like them, but you got to embrace them because you're, it's your, part that you're contributing to the success of your team and and that corner that was my job to be on that post and thank god i was there um to clear it off and then we went obviously we went into pks uh, to end up winning uh the world cup but it's important to um do your job even if it's not glamorous i play left outside mid who's the outside midfielder anyone one yeah there we got one in the back of the car one there so heather and anna and girl in the back seat of the car I don't know your name um so sometimes outside mid is not glamour you don't get the ball very much do you especially if you're left midfield anybody left midfield okay all right yes Heather you're left and back in the car there you are um so I 
I really got the ball sometimes and it would be so frustrating. I would, after games, I would be so drained, almost like in tears. Cause I was just so tired of like, I'm running up and down the field and I feel like I didn't feel part of the team. Um, but some days after the games, my coach would be like, little way to work today, way to work up and down that field. Or my teammates would say something. I'm like, oh, all right. So I do matter. Uh, so sometimes it just needs that little extra support from your teammates to make you feel good. And, and also to remind you that to give those little acknowledgements to your teammates to make them feel good as well. Thank you for sharing that story and also bringing up the importance, right, of value in all of, all of our positions. Do we have any questions, girls? Nobody's got a question for me. Are you guys all, I have a question for you. Are you guys all out of school? Some no's and some yes. All right, this, yeah, we're ending the school this week too. So you guys are probably tired of Zoom. Well, you're not doing Zooms anymore, but right, right. <laughs> questions and answers. Um, but I'll, 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 I'll ask you guys, maybe one of you guys can answer um, this question. question. Oh, you do, Kiki yeah. or Carolyn um, or Lily, which one are you? I'm Kiki. Okay, hi, Kiki. I was wondering, do you have anything that's like special that you feel like lucky that what, like you have something that's lucky that you feel like you have to like wear it or do something before? Yeah. All right. Well, that's so good. That's a good one. Um, my daughter has one right now. It's her headband that she wears to every game. Same exact one. But when I played in the world cup in 1999, we had uh, these bracelets that someone made, you know, those kind of friendship bracelets, but it said uh, 99 world cup on it. And we were still allowed to wear those in the game. For some reason, the referees didn't care about it. I wore that one every day, every, every day. And then after the World Cup, I put it on my backpack and I had that forever. And I think I still have my backpack that I have from, that's from 1999. That's like a long time ago. You know that, right? So yeah, I do have a special things and routines that I do before I used to play as well that make me feel ready to go for the game. Anyone else have one before I ask you guys one? Yes, up there, uh, Zoe. I was wondering, like, how you deal with, like, like being nervous before, like, a big game? Yeah, that's a good, that's a good question because we're all nervous. Before the World Cup in 1999, I'll go back to that story. So we were playing at the Rose Bowl in California, Pasadena. And before our game was a third place game with Brazil, I think Brazil and Norway. And that game went into overtime and penalty kicks. So by the time our game was getting ready to play, we didn't really have a lot of time on the field. We didn't, I don't think we had any. So we were warming up in the hall of the, of the stadium and it was just cement floors and we're doing our jogging and we're like going really slow because we're afraid to go too fast because we might slip and <laughs> pull a groin or something. And I remember being so nervous because a lot of times guys, right? Think about this, you're warming up, your warm up helps you get rid of the nerves a little bit. So I wasn't getting rid of any nerves. And I remember talking to our mental skills coach, Dr. Colleen Hacker. I was like, hack, she was like, what? I go, I'm, I'm nervous, I need something. She's like, all right, so she told me a joke and it wasn't very funny. <laughs> I was like, well, that didn't work. <laughs> so then I remember standing in the tunnel to go out to the stadium and all you could see is just people, see of people. And I just remember having these huge butterflies and nerves in my body. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is it. This is what we've been training for. This is what we've been promoting this moment. And I remember walking out there and I was just looking around and the nerves were still there. And I was like, oh gosh, I gotta, I gotta figure out how to control myself. And then the whistle blew and then it stopped the nerves. Cause I was like, okay, now I gotta get in position. I wasn't thinking about the butterflies in my belly or what I needed to do because I know we prepared for this moment. And so a good way to remember before you step on a field is you've done all the stuff. You know, when you start questioning yourself is when you don't think you can do it. You can do it. You guys have been doing the training you're in the practice. You know what to do on kicks. You know, you know what your goal is. You know what your position is. Now you just got to let yourself go out and play. And just to remind yourself, I've done this before. It's the same game. Maybe a little bit high pressure feeling, but it's the same game. And then find a buddy that makes you laugh. That always helps. All right. We got Kiki, Carolyn, and Lily right there. Okay, Lily has a question. I have a question. Um, That's a beautiful name, Lily. <laughs> Thank you. Um, what's your favorite like memory or moment that you remember with the national team, like on your journey? Uh, my favorite, my favorite memories really are the locker room, hanging out with my team before games, listening to music, laughing. Um, we used to do uh, the best worst dance. So the, the object of it was to do your worst dance and see if you could win as being the worst dancer. <laughs> that was Julie Foudy's game. 
Um, but just laughing and being around my teammates, the locker room, the hotel rooms, on trips, going for walks, getting ice cream, going out to dinners. Um, and then obviously the winning, winnings are great, um, but it's really the, the, the players and being around them that really made um, the memories last and, and feel really good. Because we spent, I spent so much time with these women. I mean, on the road, on airplanes, flying to China, like 20 hours. You know, so you have to be able to, you have to get along and you have to find the support and comfort from each other. And, and we found ways to make each other laugh and have a good time. So those are the best memories. All right, let me ask you guys a question. Great, tell me, I mean, you can put your hand up when I'll, and I'll call you to, what do you love about soccer? Like, why do you play soccer? What do you love about it? Who wants to start? Yeah, right up front there, Sydney. Um, probably like hanging out with my teammates, like, um, and then like also like celebrating like a win or something. Yeah, that's awesome. I mean, that's that's the that's the part. Yeah. Okay. And we got Anna, Anna Rose. I like the fast pace and just how quick it moves, how like it can just change so quick and how fun it is. Awesome. All right. So the pace and the constant moving of it. What else? Who else has one? Uh, Zoe, you got one. Let me hear one. Oh, I like like the high intensity like sessions and how competitive it is. All right, so you like to compete. I like that. Competing is good because that makes you want to win. Anyone else? Anna, down the bottom there. Um, I like how fast it is too, and I like the excitement it brings. Yeah, awesome, fast and excitement. Who else? Oh, Sarah Parker, I see you. I like when we like win a big game. And like we needed to win that. It feels good, right? It just feel. Yeah, it feels awesome. Heather. I love playing with my team. You like playing with your team? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I like that. It's, it's always nice to have people around to help you. All right, uh, Brooke, down at the bottom, Rose and Shine. Um, I, I agree with what everyone said, but I also really like um, the feeling when you hit like a good hard pass and it just goes right to the person. It just makes yes. it we we used to call those like little zingers like it's just probably like at like waist and below and it just goes through the air and it, they trap it like perfectly that's awesome i like that all right kiki carolyn and lily who's who's going or all three of you um so i think me and kiki both yeah. have one but um mine's like when you're playing against your rival team and you beat them yeah. or like do well against them um yeah. mine is <clears throat> the feeling of when you do something good or you feel proud of yourself for doing a move and your teammates are like cheering for you. Yeah. Oh, a really excited bench. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> right? The support from each other. Anyone else want to add? What about my car ride? It looks like you guys are doing that. What's that um, show where they sing in the car? It looks like you guys get karaoke, car karaoke. <laughs> yeah, someone on mute. Faith, someone on mute in there. What's going on in there? Tell me something out of there. There's a lawnmower going on. It's what? Go ahead. No. There's a lawnmower, so it might not. I don't hear a lawnmower. You guys can share. Tell me something. What? Why don't you guys say something you love of why you love soccer? I like the environment and all the friends you make on the team. Good. That's a great answer. Where are you guys going? Or where are you I park? love. We have practice. Oh, cool. All right. Good. And go ahead. Uh, sorry. You you love what? Go ahead. I like how like I get to escape from everything and just play the game and have fun. That is perfect. Where are you? They laughing. All right, I love that. What's your name? Casey. 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 You know what? Okay, so all your guys' answers are spot on. I mean, that's what you love about it. When I played soccer, the the most comfortable place or the most free I felt was on a soccer field, because I could just be myself. I could just go out there and compete and try to be the best I can be at something. No one was bothering me. I didn't have to listen to mom tell me to do something or dad. Um, I was with my friends and just competing. So I love that. And all, all, all what you said is, is a reason why you guys are here playing. And a lot of the elements were what was being about being a part of a team. And I think that's really special. I didn't do, I didn't do any individual sports because I liked the support I had from teammates and I loved supporting my teammates. I loved you just giving a little high five or a little, you know, hit on the tush, like, good job, you know, um, and making sure that my teammates knew that I was there for them, I was proud of them, 
and the same they felt for me too. So those are, I like the, those are good, good sharings, everybody. Yeah, well done, Impact. I'm, I'm impressed. That was great. Christine, can you share with us, if you didn't already, um, how we can order the book and any special details that we need to know? Yeah, so I mean, I have books here. So if you would like it personalized um, from me, then you can send me an email with your name and address, and then I could ship it out to you. And from me, it's usually $20 for a signed book. And then usually it's like $5 for the shipping and stuff I have to do. Um, but I would mail it right to you and then um, I would sign it to you and then you can get off reading all about uh, why the U.S. team was so successful and how cool my my teammates all were. And I can wait and Dina can get my email address and every information you guys need if, if you're interested. And also it's on Amazon, but if you want a signed copy, it's your best bet's coming through me. Great. And I, yeah, so I'll put together an email and I'll, I'll put it on my um, Instagram account too for all of you to to order. I'll, I'll do that. Um, tomorrow. Um, and then what we'll do is we'll regroup uh, at the end of August or beginning of September. We'll figure out a day that works uh, for Christine. And then we can debrief a little bit more after reading uh, the book. Or Christine did mention that you can even flip through and pick some themes or some chapters that you want to learn more about. And that's okay um, as well. So Christine, I don't know if you wanted to go over just a few of the highlighted chapters and then... Um, yeah. Yeah, that really oh, what's cool too, um, so each chapter is a tactic, um, so 13 tactics, and the, the last one is doing what's right, and the overall theme of the book is, you know, doing how you train whatever you do, doing what's right, and that's, our team did that in many elements of, of our training, you know, integrity, playing by the rules, uh, fighting for off-field things, fighting for our contracts, fighting to get paid, I mean, the national team's now fighting to get paid more, when I was playing, we were just fighting to get paid. Um, and then, so there's also the first chapter is about um, picking your team per se, direction, team direction, foundation. Uh, there's one about uh, leadership, communication, culture, um, chemistry. Um, my husband's in there um, and his chapter is about teamwork. So he's a firefighter. So it talks about the importance of firefighters coming together because for them it's life and death if they're not doing their job. So that's kind of a really cool chapter. Um, not because he's my husband, but because um, the elements of the brotherhood that they have in the fire department is pretty incredible as well. So all the things that you guys talk about, you know, the chemistry being part of the competitiveness, there's definitely stuff in there that in all these chapters that shows how competitive we were and trying to push each other to be better. Um, because if you're not pushing each other to be better, then you're not going to get better and your teammates aren't. So the book kind of encompasses that and all that, but all those different chapters, you can find something that you might like and ask me about or read about. And um, each chapter at the end of it is an interview with one of my former teammates. So you can hear their perspective also on the, the tactic that's on each chapter. Yeah, I think the interviews will be great. And, and I think as you're going through the book too, if you want to kind of do extra research on the person that was interviewed, that makes it even better because, you know, they have, e they have done so much in, in the sport and you can learn a little bit more about um, them. And, and I think that will kind of pique your interest a little bit more. So I think the interviews always add value to the, to the chapters for sure. Yeah. I mean, there's, I mean, people like Carla Overbeck, who is our captain, Michelle Akers, uh, Mia Hamm did the forward. So she has a whole big part that she's written. Um, there's also Alex Morgan and Megan Rapino are in there and Carly Lloyd. So current players that we've kind of um, blended in with it and brandy and so you can find out a lot of um information about some cool cool people great and then can you share a little bit uh about your camp i don't know if it's still you know with the regulations but i know a couple of uh, people i've recommended in the past and have loved your camp yeah so I, I mean i don't know where you guys are all around the no, here right yeah. massachusetts right so i'm doing oh, one um it's july 26th to 29th in massachusetts and then july 12th to 15th connecticut my most of my my oh you guys are older anyway so i have a one session that i'm doing from four to seven on july 26th to 29th in medfield that is for seven eight and high school so seventh and older um and i'm doing that this is the first time i'm doing this session of that age so that would be the one that would be best for you guys and there's spots still available for that and that's in midfield. And if you go to christinelily13.com and go to camps, you can read all about it there if you like. Great. And I'll put that in the email too um, yeah. for you as well. 
Does anyone else have any other questions at all? Anyone? I see all the I, I see all these names on the back page of here. I'm saying hi to Haley and Sarah and Tessa and Gwen and Adam. That's probably not Adam, but um, Martha and Emma. So I don't see your faces, but she's giving you guys a shout out. And Taylor and another Haley. Lots of Haley's. Hi, Haley. Um, and Abigail and Anna. So those that aren't showing faces, I see your names and maybe next time you'll show me your pretty face. Excellent. I think that would be great. Yeah, if we can show our faces. I know we're all busy traveling. I love it when we get players who are driving to practice. When we had teams at practices in the past, join us for Zoom. So um, hopefully the next time we regroup um, after reading the book, we will really have um, more, more players here as well. So um, this was fantastic, Christine. And just so everybody knows, you know, once uh, Christine does something, she does it with all of her heart. And I know she's gonna be with us even beyond the second time that we um, gather after we read the book. Um, and, and we can learn from her, learn from her instruction, learn from her expertise. She truly is a legend. So again, if you haven't um, been able to watch her play on any uh, video, just to school of Christine Lilly and you get to see so much great stuff um, and, and her in action. And uh, like I was going to say before, when I got cut off, what impressed me the most about um, working with Christine, aside from just the soccer stuff, was her ability to connect with people. We, we had about 75 volunteers at the Boston Breakers for game day. And I think Christine met every single one of them. Um, we had an end of season gathering and I'll never forget how giving um, Christine was with her time um, and a lot of times people volunteer because they want to get up close with professional athletes, but the time that these volunteers spent on the field um, went, uh, did not go unappreciated. And, and Christine modeled that for, I think, the rest of the players as well. So I will forever be thankful for that because that was really special um, uh, yeah. for me to be part of the Breakers. Well, thank you. And also, just remember, you guys, I was once your age, and I know we don't want to hear thing. I know my daughter doesn't want to hear from her mom, but there are a lot of things that you, Dina, we've all been through. We've been there. So there's not a question that you ask that we can't relate or help with. Um, nerves, scared, um, any kind of feeling we've all, we've all been there alone, frustrated, you know, feeling like you don't matter on the field. No one, you know, you're not getting the playing time. You know, those are areas that you still can vent a little bit and just find ways to, to help you continue to keep growing as a player and a person, because we're all here to try to help you guys be better. Excellent. Well, everyone, thank you for your time. I know it's really hard, especially with the end of school um, and some practice sessions that we have um, still going on. So Christine, thank you so much for your time. Uh, for the impact group, I'll be sending out an email. So um, please hop on that to uh, order the book so you can get reading. And like any good teacher, I'll be sending out some prompts for you and making sure that you're reading the book. And then when we gather, we'll really have um, and more, even more enriching discussion. I thought some of the questions today were fantastic. So I really appreciate those who, who, um, who did uh, unmute and ask your questions. And Christine, thank you again for being um, so open to uh, engaging with us and answering our, our questions and joining us tonight. So we really yeah, appreciate it. Of course, and thanks you guys for being flexible with the date change. Appreciate it. Great. All right, Impact players, thank you. Thank you again, Christine. We'll be in touch.